Welcome to Garden Wise Adventures. My name is Malie, and today I wanted to talk to you about a topic that is really important to me, and that is about water efficient landscapes. Now, I live in Utah, zone 6 7, and as you know, the southwest has been experiencing pretty severe droughts lately. So I decided I wanted to talk about water efficient landscapes and a little bit about what they are, why they're important, and how you can create a more water efficient landscape on your property. Now, as I said before, the Southwest has been experiencing pretty severe droughts and our water resources are being stretched to their limits. So it's really important to start doing things that will help conserve water. Now, because of the droughts that we've experienced, the state of Utah has enacted several laws recently that are going to affect us as homeowners. Now, one other thing that they've done is they've actually initiated a turf buyback program, which I'm going to talk about a little more in a different video. Now, one of the laws that they've enacted is to require secondary water meters. Now, for those of you who, are, who don't know what secondary water is, it is water that is untreated and is primarily used for irrigation. And I'll link a video up above that will show you where my city gets its secondary water. It's usually a different source than the culinary water. And in Pleasant Grove where I live, it's from runoff from the mountains that are right behind my house. Now, historically, secondary water in Utah has not been able to be metered because it is actually dirty water. They do filter it, but there's a lot of sediment in it, and the meters were not able to handle that. But meters that have been able to handle the dirty secondary water have been created, and now we're going to have to have our secondary water metered. Now, having water metered sounds really scary to some people. It sounds like government is coming in and trying to control us, but it's not that. One of the reasons they've decided to install secondary water meters is because we cannot understand how much water we need to save when we actually don't know how much water we're using. Now, I've read very quickly through the legislation and it looks like that the rates will not go up that much. Our city in Pleasant Grove is going to be starting to install their meters next year. For those of you who don't know how secondary water works in Utah, historically the rates have been subsidized by water districts, so the rates are very, very low. We don't pay very much for our water. And people have not really had the initiative to conserve water because it doesn't cost a lot to pay for it. And we don't really actually know how much we're using. So personally, I feel meters are very important. Now, I do have to say, because the water rates have been kept so low, I do foresee in the future a chance that our rates will go up and maybe even pretty significantly. So, it is really important to start understanding water conservation right now. Number one, to preserve our precious resources so that our children and our grandchildren will have the water they need in the future. And it's eventually going to be able to save us money. We do need to be good stewards of what we have and this is going to help us. So now that we've talked a little bit about the importance of water efficient landscapes, let's talk a little bit about what they look like. Now, most people, when they think of water efficient landscapes, think of barren landscapes with a lot of rocks and maybe a few cactus and a few yucca. Now, as I said, I am a landscape designer. So functionality and beauty, and of course, water conservation are really, really important to me. And I can tell you that water efficient landscapes can be absolutely gorgeous. So let's take you around my property a little bit and show you my landscape, talk to you a little bit about why it is water efficient, and then we'll talk a little bit more about how you can make your properties more water efficient. Now this is my backyard. There's the mountains that I was talking about. I live in a gorgeous area, but as you'll notice, I have lawn. Now this lawn is actually really water efficient. Don't mind the spots. Those spots are created by a fertilizer spill when I was fertilizing citrus trees last fall. But this lawn area typically is only watered two times a week in the summer, except for in the very hottest times. And then I will sometimes water it three times a week, just depending on how it looks. Now the way I've worked on this lawn to make it more water efficient is number one, where I planted it. Now this, that we're facing east right now, behind me is west and behind me is my house. And this lawn actually gets quite a bit of shade. So the turf that is in this lawn can tolerate a little bit of shade and the shade keeps this area from drying out very much. So this is the area where I chose to leave lawn because it's the area that needs to be watered the least. Another thing you can do to make lawn more water efficient is to choose drought tolerant varieties. Now I do have to say, Kentucky bluegrass can be very drought tolerant. 
but you have to water it correctly. Now to water lawns correctly, what you need to do is start out in the spring by drought stressing your lawn. And what I mean is do not water your lawn until it turns a little bit of a silvery color and you can see your foot tracks left in the lawn as you walk across it. Then you water really, really deeply. Then you wait until it looks drought stressed again and then water deeply. Wait until it looks drought stressed again and then start your regular watering cycles. That will force the roots deeper and give you a more drought tolerant lawn. Another thing you can do to make your landscapes more water efficient is to choose things other than lawn to use on your property. Now there's a design concept created by the wonderful people over at South Jordan Water Conservation District. I think I said that correctly. I'll put the name on the screen. But they came up with a design concept called localscapes. And one of the concepts in localscapes is to create activity zones that are outside of the lawn. I chose gardens and a food forest as an activity zone. You can choose you know, fire pit areas, you can choose playgrounds. There are many different things that could be activity zones. But my garden beds are counted as waterways because they are on their own zone and I only water them when they need water. I also choose my planting mix very, very carefully and make sure that it holds water. And then I also mulch the top of my beds with straw. Now these garden beds last year I, were only watered once every two weeks for most of the season. During the hottest part of the season, I watered them three times a week. So they can be very water efficient. The food forest over here is water efficient. As you can see, I've used drip irrigation. As soon as I finish planting all the trees and get this area the way I want it, I will bury those irrigation lines and then this is only watered once a week right now because the trees are still young, but I'm going to work towards watering this once every two to three weeks as the trees get more mature. So this is also very water efficient. One other concept in localscapes to make your properties more water efficient is not to use lawn as pathways. You can use mulch, you can use chat, you can use flagstones, stepping stones, whatever you want to use, but don't use grass as pathways. It's too hard to efficiently water grass when they're used as a path and it's really hard to maintain it. Another thing you can do to make your landscapes more water efficient is called hydrozoning. This is the north side of my house and on this side of the property I have plants that need to be watered three times a week. I have some macrophylla hydrangeas and some mint. We've got hostas and all sorts of things that need a little bit more water. Now these plants are on the same zone as this other area that I'm going to show you right now. They also get watered with this small area where I put my annuals and some vegetables. So this area needs, also needs to be watered about three times a week. So I've hydrozoned all of those plants together on the same zone so they can be watered at the same time and no one plant gets watered more than is needed. Now my seating area is really small, but having seating areas or gathering areas on your property is another way to make your landscapes more water efficient. Keep them out of the lawns in an area that doesn't need to be irrigated and that's a way to have an absolutely beautiful area that doesn't require any water at all. The last thing we're going to talk about is choosing the right plants. Now the right plants do not have to be cactus and succulents. This is early May and it's been a late spring so some of my plants have not shown up yet but this is what an early spring garden looks like that is water efficient. So let me show you more plants that are counted as water efficient and you might be a little bit surprised.
Now, because I'm a huge proponent of water efficient landscapes and because they seem to be so misunderstood lately, I've decided to create a video series about what water efficient landscapes look like in Utah. Now, the properties that I'm going to show are located in Utah, but the principles that I had described earlier in this video to create a water efficient landscape can be used anywhere in the world. And anywhere you live, it's always important to be a really good steward of the resources that we have. So I'm really excited to show these properties to you. If you actually live in Utah and have a water efficient landscape and would like to be featured on one of those videos, just put a comment down below and I would love to see your property. So I'm excited to see you in the rest of these videos. And until then, I hope you have a wonderful garden adventure.